Hi, I'm John Smith. Welcome to Kingdom Real. I think we ought to go a little deeper. Absolutely. In some of the things you shared last time. Yeah. So, you talked about some of the painful, difficult experiences that you had. Yeah. And if you want to kind of just recap some of that where you were, and then how does that influence you ongoing in the ministry? You know, here's the thing Satan knows how to just, how, the Bible says it's come to what? Rob, kill, and destroy. Yeah. He's going to do one or the other with you. Mm-hmm. He's, going to, he's going to do whatever he can to disrupt, interrupt, corrupt whatever he's going to do with you. Well, for me, because of my makeup, hmm. I'm a person, I'm a people person, I love to please people, and I love, I love connecting with people, and, um, and here's the big one, um, I, if, I, uh, people affirm me, hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm looking for affirmation from people more so than God. Okay. And how's that work out? And let me just say this. <laughs> As a pastor, you're going to get what you're looking for. Mm. And and you're going to get the affirmation, but you're going to get the other because people are because at the end of the day, people betray you. And and I and I didn't really believe that when I walked into it. Now my wife has a gift of discernment. She kept always warning me from this person, that person, this person. That. Mm. She always kept saying, you're going to get, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. And I'm like, hey, she doesn't know what she's talking about. Right. Right. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm super pastor. <laughs> right. Well, that wasn't the case. And I never, and I never heeded her warnings. Mm. And because of that, God taught me a huge lesson. And here I am today talking about that lesson. I am alive today because of God's mercy and grace, because he woke me up. And after suffering, nearly 10 to 12 years of depression. Wow. Of, and, and through those 10 to 12 years, I gained 200 pounds. Oh my goodness. 200 pounds. And I found myself dying inside to the point it affected my marriage, it affected my life with my sons, it was affecting everything around me to the point my wife had to do an intervention. She called my parents. Now, remember from part one of my, <laughs> the greatest influence, right? Yeah. Well, guess what? They're also the greatest rebukers. <laughs> <laughs> and she knew. She knew. She, she knew what you needed. She knew what I needed. And who could deliver. And who could deliver. And sure enough, it was my parents. And I'll never forget, as my parents sat in the, my, we were at my sister's, it was, it, we caught, she caught it in a holiday. And it was just like, I don't know how she did it. But sure enough, my, my dad said, hey, I want to talk to you. I said, sure. And all of a sudden, my mom's in the room. My dad's in the room. I'm in the room. And they're sitting this. And my dad, I could just see this. He said, sit down. We got to talk. And before you know it, he's not talking to me as a father. He's talking to me as a bishop. Hmm. And he says to me, you need to take some time away from the ministry. And you got to find yourself. He says, you're hurting. Your wife is hurting. See, he just went on and on and on. And, I, and because my wife was so right, I began to even snap right there. And then she's like, see, see, look at him. Look at him. Oh <laughs> but I was so angry. I was so angry with her that I still held on to the anger. Mm. I still held on to the hurt. And then my mom even said, she looked at me and said, you are a lot like your mom. I'm like, well, how so? She says, you take all these little bottles of hurt and you shelve them. You don't deal with them. And before you know it, they're falling off. I'm snapping at my boys. I'm snapping at her. I'm, I'm, I'm short. I'm, I mean, I'm gaining weight. I'm getting unhealthy. Right? Mm. Wow. To the point, now this, this is really deep here. To the point, we had an argument coming back on the road. And she and I was so I, it was quiet the whole way. You know, you know those talk. You know those drives when you don't say nothing to your spouse. You're just quiet. You're like, mm-hmm, yeah, wait till mm-hmm. I ain't saying nothing to you. Why? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <clears throat> I went home 
and I drank a whole bottle of sangria. And it ignited everything in me. Everything in my heart, everything. I thought I was going to die that night. Hmm. And God warned me. He said, if you ever drink in anger, I'll deal with you. Oh, wow. And I did. And he warned me. And I woke up the next morning and found myself going to my doctors. And that's when they, they said, you're in trouble. They diagnosed me. They, they looked at my, they looked at all my numbers, took my blood and they said, you're in trouble. I took, it was like two weeks of going to see specialists. My life was in, my life is in jeopardy here. Hmm. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Right. Yeah. But it was interesting. My sister called me, gave me a word of life. I mean, just poor, just spoke a word and said, God did this because he's not done with you yet. And God did this because he's not done with you yet. And immediately I knew I was healed. Four weeks later, I went back to the doctor's office. They, 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 they're they looking at my number saying, how is this happening? Hmm. <clears throat> I'm healed. I'm, I got to do the work. Yeah. But I'm healed. Why? Because God, because see what God's doing, he's changing me in my life. Mm. But he's changing me. Mm. Because at the end of the day, I had to take responsibility. Mm-hmm. Because the enemy got in. Let me tell you something, John. There's a demon behind oppression. There's demonic influence behind oppression. Oppre- depression. Depression. Yeah. Depression. There's a de- and let me tell you something. There's a demonic influence around gluttony. Hmm. Depression says to gluttony, hey, come over here. We'll help you. Hmm. Drown your sorrows in this food. Right? Yep. There's one more demon. You ready for this one? It's called entertainment. Hmm. He sits you down on the couch and now you're watching TV. See, all three of those work in cohesion with each other. Yeah. Isn't that deep? Mm-hmm. It is. And before you know it, there's that song, Killing Me Softly. Hmm. The devil knows if he can get God's people to depression, we'll, we'll sink. And then we go through those miry clays. Yeah. And then we die. So he robs, kills, and destroys. The question is, which order is it going in? Hmm. Okay? Yeah. So for me, God woke me up. And I'm claiming my life back. I'm claiming my marriage back. Even though we've been together for 30 years. No, 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 no. If God gives me another 25 years before, or he, or his return or whatever, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Then guess what? These are going to be the best. I, 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 I'm committing that these are going to be the best years for me and Yvette. And I'm getting, and I'm, and, and for my life. Yeah. And a pastor is no good to his family, to his wife, to his children, to his congregation unless he gets this in order. Don't turn to the things of this world. Let's go back to the hymn song. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his glorious grace, right? Mm -hmm. And the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glorious grace. Wow. But let's do the verse. Oh, so are you wearied and troubled? (laughs) Hello? That's the first verse. It is. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's... but. That's where we need to be. Yeah. And that's when you and I were talking in the coffee shop. Mm -hmm. And life began to come back to me. I began to go back to that six-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. I started getting excited again. Thank you for joining us for part one with our guest, J.R. Pittman. Tune in Wednesday for part two and Friday for part three. (laughs) 